and gentlemen, and welcome back to Tech Showdown. My name is Kevin, this is my co-host Teddy, and uh, I'm just making this video today to talk about Ryzen. I don't have a script, I don't have anything, this is just going to be talking from um, knowledge and what I've learned so far, and just from reading things and giving you uh, my opinion, because a lot of you guys like these types of videos. Now, first I just want to say, if you haven't checked out the Tech Lounge, it's a live show I do every Monday in New Zealand and Australia, but it would be Sunday for Americans and Europeans um, and Canadians. Uh, and we do it over on his channel. I'll leave a link in the description to the last one we do. So definitely um, tune in for those because this is something we've talked a lot about on the Tech Lounge, um, talking about these Ryzen CPUs. But let's jump right into it then. Now I'm not going to give you guys too much of an overview of the CPUs themselves because about every tech channel out there is doing that and your subscription feed right now, if you're subscribed to a lot of uh, tech YouTubers, is probably just full of people saying this is what they are, this is what they do, this is all that stuff. This is going to be more um, my opinion on what I've seen so far. So let's jump right in then and talk about, I'll briefly go over the models for you guys. So at launch right now, there's going to be three models that you'll be able to uh, buy on March 2nd in the USA and well, it'll be March 3rd in New Zealand and Australia, I think. Uh, and that's going to be the Ryzen 7 1700, the 1700X and the 1800X. Now those are all 8-core, 16-thread CPUs just like the i7-16900K I have in my rig. Uh, so that's good. The main difference there is there's a TDP difference. The 1700 is a 65 watt TDP. The other two are 95 watt TDPs. Uh, there's also clock speed differences, which I'll um, you know you guys will be able to see on the screen right now. Different uh, base clocks and uh, boost clocks or turbo clocks. Well, they're saying yeah, boost frequency. Okay, whichever one you prefer, whichever term. And uh, there's the X on the end. Now, you may think, well, is the X meaning the ones that you can overclock? No, you'll be able to overclock all three. None of the Ryzen CPUs will be locked. They're not copying Intel, thank goodness, in that regard. The X refers to uh, XFR, which is their extreme frequency range, I believe. And from what I've gathered, from what I've read, that is like uh, NVIDIA's GPU Boost 3.0 in the sense that it will auto overclock the CPU if temperatures are allow. So if you run a very good cooler with it, say a big you know, 240, 280 mil uh, liquid cooler or a big boy um, air cooler, then uh, it will automatically overclock itself up without you having to do anything manually um, up to a higher frequency. So say the 1800X, the stock turbo will be 4 gigahertz maybe it'll go up to 4.2 4.3 all by itself obviously we'll have to see uh, once we get them and start testing but that's basically um, what I've gathered from that so far so let's talk about pricing quickly then and I'll um, yeah everyone's talking about the US pricing so I'll do New Zealand pricing I'll also touch a bit on the US pricing but a lot of you Americans might um, you know be interested to see what they're going to be selling for over here so the 1700 will be going for uh, at launch 530 New Zealand dollars. The 1700X will be going for 639 New Zealand dollars, and the 1800X will be coming in at $800. Now that might not mean anything to you if you don't understand how much a New Zealand dollar is worth. So let's compare it to uh, Intel's lineup. We'll start at the top with the Broadwell E CPUs because that's where I personally think. Uh, these Ryzen CPUs are going to absolutely, that it's going to really hit Intel hard in the Broadwell E slash Skylake E CPU department. It's really just going to cause some big problems there. So the 6800K, which is the cheapest Broadwell E CPU, that is a 6 core, remember? 6 core, 12 thread. That's coming in at 720 New Zealand dollars. The next one up, the 6850K, is 970. And then my one, the 6900K, is 1700 New Zealand dollars. So just think, the 1800X, the top Ryzen CPU, is coming in at $800 compared to the 6900K, $1700. And from what we've seen so far, and from what AMD have been saying, uh, the multi-threaded performance, even the single-threaded, I believe, is identical to each other, you know. Uh, the 1800X and the 6900K, which is absolutely crazy. So that is one um, very interesting thing there. Now, if we compare that to Intel's core lineup, you know, the mainstream lineup, 
we'll just attack the top ones. The 7700K 70, KB Lake CPU, that's coming in at $550, which means you would be able to get, it'll be pretty close, but that uh, R7, uh, Ryzen 7 uh, 1700 for less than the uh, 7700K, which would be very interesting there. That's a very compelling price point to come in at. And of course, you have the 7600K coming in at $375, but we will be seeing um, competition with that a bit later on with the Ryzen 1600X, which will be their six core, 12 thread Ryzen CPU, the Ryzen 5s. That, you know, obviously to go up against the i5s. So yeah, what, what can we take from that? As I've said, um, my prediction right now, I think the KB Lake, the um, 7000 series CPUs will survive this. Obviously they launched and it didn't really blow anybody away in terms of IPC gains and anything else like that. But I think they will retain their position as the fastest uh, CPUs in terms of clock clock speeds. However, um, I think Broadwell E is done for. Honestly, it, I just cannot, and you know, I run a Broadwell E CPU. I do not see why people would go for the Broadwell E CPUs um, while the Ryzen alternatives are there. And I know you guys are gonna say, well, Kevin, you get quad channel memory on the um, Broadwell E, you get more PCIe uh, channels, you know, you get 40 as opposed to the 24 you'll get on uh, with the 1800X and the X370. I'm aware of all those things. But I honestly don't see them as compelling enough for the people to spend all that extra money. Even if the 1800X is 10% slower than the 6900K, do you really think people are going to spend that extra 900 New Zealand dollars to buy the 6900K over the uh, 1800X? I just do not see it happening. And that's being generous that the 6900K would uh, be 10% more powerful than the um, Ryzen. Now people are also telling me, but you know, Ryzen doesn't look like it's gonna be overclocking that good. Well, Broadway LE doesn't overclock very good. Ask anybody who runs a Broadway LE CPU like me. My 6900K is at 4.2. That's not particularly high, and that's not because I'm just running a super safe overclock. I can get it to 4.3, but it's, it's funny there, and it will never go to 4.4, no matter what I did. I tried everything guys, it would not go to 4.4, even at 4.3 it was being a bit funny. So I just took it, 4.2 it was completely stable, so I kept it there because I need the stability obviously when I'm doing my benchmarking and stuff. So in that regard, if the 1800X is coming in with the stock clock of 4 gigahertz, it only needs to be able to go up a few hundred megahertz higher um, and it will be competitive in, in, in not competitive, but, but you get what I mean, it will be able to uh, mirror um, the 6900K in terms of overclockability. Obviously, we would like more, and with KB Lake being crazy overclockers, um, we'll see if how it goes. But this may also change with some of the other Ryzen CPUs coming out. But yeah, just um, quite interesting there. Another thing, yeah, the the overclocking wise, I don't think it's as big of a deal as a lot of people um, make it out to be. So quickly, so I don't want this video to go on too long, uh, let's quickly talk about the motherboards then. So uh, coming with uh, three main ones that, um, two of them are gonna be the main ones you guys are interested in, there'd be the A320, B350, and the X370. The 320, I doubt many of you guys will actually be that interested in it. Personal opinion, I just don't see it. Um, I see a lot of you guys going towards the B350s and a lot of you guys going towards the X370s. Now price-wise, let's talk about that very, very quickly now. Um, in New Zealand, I'll show it up on the screen right now, you can see price-wise it's um, pretty cheap, especially when we compare it to Z270, very cheap by comparison. You have B350, you see one there from Gigabyte, 175, you get another one there, uh, 159 from ASUS, that's very good. X370's a um, bit more expensive there, that uh, ASUS Crosshair, Crosshair 6 Hero, that's coming at $450. Now, um, I don't want to get into all the difference between them in terms of the specs and stuff because I might lose some of you guys, but I'll make it basic. Really, for the majority of people, you'll probably want to go for the B350. Now, um, those who want to go for the X370 will be those that uh, will want the extra PCIe lanes, you know, running SLI Crossfire GPUs or they're running NVMe stuff. 
um, they'll they'll want to go for it. Uh, enthusiasts who want better overclock ability, you get um, ten phase power and other fun things like that on X three seventy. That'll be for a lot of enthusiasts and just um, people that you know want a higher quality um, motherboard. Not to say the B three fifties will be bad quality, but you know what I mean in terms of having more features, just just more stuff on it, um, more things for you to play with, basically. Those will be, uh, which is what the enthusiasts usually like, like me, uh, will go towards the um, X370. But the B350 is going to be a very solid choice for those who are running single GPU. Um, maybe going to just do a bit of overclocking, but not going to be super serious about it. And they will also want, you know, just a good value for money board that's going to still be very good quality. Um, definitely not an entry level motherboard. Um, good quality and be um, very solid for them for everything. And that will be the B350. People that don't care so much about the features and, and some of that other stuff. So yeah, that's how I predict it right now. And these motherboards are very, very cheap. So I'm going to end the video here because I've gone on a bit right now. But yeah, Ryzen is pretty crazy. This is giving me giving you my um, sort of opinion on it and my predictions. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. I want to talk to you guys about it. So I'll reply to um, quite a few comments. So you guys, let me know what you think about Ryzen predictions, all that fun stuff. Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.